friend of mine was just here, and he saw what I do with my cords when I'm using the extension cord with a tool plugged in, so that when I'm pulling on it, I don't end up with my cord flopping loose. I never thought nothing of it. He thought it was really neat. He goes, I bet people would like to see that, so let me show you what I do. All right, so I get myself a piece of Romex, um, you know, house count, uh, house uh, conductor, house wiring, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this particular thing, I have this laying around because this is called UF. Um, this is supposed to be direct burial. Uh, I never, ever direct bury wire in the ground. I always put it in pipe. A friend of mine had got this at an estate sale, thought I could use it. Thank you for the effort, but... I don't use this. The difference in this is every single conductor is insulated. As you can see, I have cut it apart already because I use a lot of this stuff. So what I do is I take and cut this stuff out down here a little bit, little ways. Separate it. I want to get that out of there. Trying to be careful not to damage the insulation that's in there. That's another problem with this. People use this stuff for direct burial. And uh, I just bet my fingernail back. That was interesting. And uh, then they end up damaging the wire trying to terminate it. And it's pointless. You gotta start over. All right, so I peel this all out. And for our application of what we're doing, uh, I never use the bare copper because uh, there's no insulation on it. So let me set that aside for something else. So this is number 10. It's solid copper, okay? And um, I like number 10 wire because it's stiffer and, you know, it's a little stronger. Okay, so I take the wire and I put it 90 degrees to my cord. I just hold that tab right there with one finger and just give it a few wraps. I want that wrap to be as tight as I can get it for several reasons. I usually get three or four wraps, whatever whatever the length of the wire will allow me to do. All right, and then I pull that that wrap as tight as I can get it to the back of the connector. Okay. All right. Then I take my tool that I'm going to plug in. Yes, I know I need to replace the cord. The equipment ground end is broke off. If you guys don't know. Uh, you get the hot and neutral here. And this is the equipment ground, meaning that this ground here goes to your tool and anything on the tool that's metal that you can touch, uh, the metal in, in the tool itself is going to be um, grounded. This is the grounding conductor. This is personal protection. So when that thing's broke, if that tool would short out, there's no protection. If the body of the tool shorts out, my knees on the concrete, the concrete's the quickest, easiest path to ground. It's going through me, across my heart, down my knee to ground. So very important. We'll get this changed. Let's get back onto this. So the way this is supposed to plug in is like this. So I always orientate this to be on this side. This is where the grounding conductor is. In electrical terms, there's a difference between grounding conductor and grounded conductor. It's a big difference. All right, so then I just roll this thing over. I make sure it's tight here. I just take this side and pull it tight, get it as tight to there as I can, give it a few twists, and there we go. So now as I'm pulling on this, it's not pulling the thing apart and getting, you know, running across a piece of metal or anything short and out. It's much safer. I know there's plastic doodads and that home shopping network this and, and the, the super de duper greater than sliced bread things you can buy to do this. You know, the hard plastic one that goes from one side to the other and makes it really long and gets caught on stuff or, you know, tying it in a knot and then it gets caught on stuff. I do this just because I always have this stuff laying around. I have this on all my cords. Another benefit to doing this is if you've ever pulled on your cords, you know about separation where the insulation comes loose from the molded uh, cord end. And when it does, you know, the next thing you have to do for protection is cut that off and replace the end, making sure it's unplugged, of course, because we have to say that because common sense isn't so common anymore. 
drives me nuts. So anyways, that's what I do. Helps to hold my insulated wire in the molded end, keeps it from coming apart. And one of the other nice things is when you go to take this apart, you don't have to untwist it every single spiral. You just open the spiral up. You can open it up much like this and just weave your wire out of it and then just leave it for the next time. So let's say we grab the next cord, next tool, just go around here, spiral it in there, tighten it up, away you go. Another nice benefit of doing this, my wife uh, winds up a lot of my cords and uh, I like them to be neat. I like them to be organized. I like them to be hanging so when I grab an end, it's not going to pull this end up through the middle and get it all tied in a knot. I like to take the two ends, put them together, take this, again, maybe it doesn't have to be tight, spool it around here. I'm, I'm doing left-handed, that's why it looks awkward. And then all my cord is Perfect, so when I take it back apart, I grab each end, they're right where they need to be. I can just pull the end, the cord unravels. I know, guys, I know there's, you can tie your cord like this and you can do this. Those don't store nearly as neat as these for what I do with them. That's why I roll them up like this. And we don't do, we don't do the arm twisting method. We roll our cords up in a natural curl. So we're protecting the wire. So let me know what you guys use. Let me know if you think that's helpful. A friend of mine thought it was. Uh, it's just something I've done for a while. I really like it, and I have it on a lot of my cords. And for me, that's the best thing to do with direct burial cable because this stuff is so problematic, I never use this. If I use this stuff, it's always put... I can't even say that because I don't use this. That's why I'm cutting it up. Um, there was 250 feet of that. It was a brand new roll and I've cut it up because I won't use direct burial wire. If I put electricity in the ground, it's in plastic conduit, electrical plastic conduit, PVC, uh, rated for that and I glue every joint. Anyways, off topic. Let me know what you guys use. Catch you on the next one. Thanks for hanging out.